ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty how silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past, from the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! I'm Silver! Boy! Marmaduke Gillingwater was a kindly man. Love for humanity in general was as much a part of his generous nature as the slightly bulbous nose, lantern jaw, and bristling eyebrows with which he faced an uncertain world. In fact, Mr. Gillingwater's love and kindliness embraced all people and all things. There was but one exception, work. His aversion to that subject was so deep-rooted, it had become a lifelong crusade. However, during the past four weeks, no one had even mentioned the unpleasant word. It was a month of bliss, basking in the warm western hospitality of the town of Prairie Flats, particularly within the Rosebud Saloon, where a man of culture and refinement was appreciated. Uh, uh, speaking of marksmanship with a rifle, gentlemen, I am reminded of a personal experience which took place a few years ago in Scotland. Have you been in Scotland too, Mr. Gillingwater? Been there. Why, my good man, the Gillingwaters have maintained a shooting lodge in Scotland for the last hundred years. Oh, I thought you said you did a lot of shooting in Africa. Oh, a few elephants, a tiger or two. And didn't you tell us yesterday about hunting reindeer up the North Pole? Uh, quite true, gentlemen, yes, but we were discussing marksmanship. And I think my experience in Scotland was... Ah, we don't want to hear any more stuff about Very well, that. gentlemen, if you insist, if you insist. Uh, one rainy afternoon a few years ago... I joined a party of duck hunters on the moors of Scotland. My companions were extremely downhearted because they hadn't bagged a single bird during the entire day's hunt. So I decided to give them an exhibition of superior marksmanship, even though my rifle contained but one bullet. Ha! Ah, just one bullet. Uh, that's right. Suddenly I sighted a flight of uh, eight wild ducks. I waited until they were in perfect alignment... Then I fired. Did you get one? One. I killed all of them. With uh, one shot? Certainly, certainly. All eight birds were flying in a straight line. Oh. But it wasn't until a few moments later that my foresight and marksmanship was proved beyond any doubt. What do you mean? Because I had timed the shot perfectly, the eight dead ducks broke the limb off a large tree as they fell to the ground. And the broken limb crushed the skull of a moose standing beneath the tree. A moose in Scotland. Everything oh. worked out exactly as I'd planned it. The dying moose kicked a jackrabbit. 
which flew through the air and landed on my shoulder. Gosh! That forced me to step backward and into a small stream which flowed nearby. Uh, you didn't figure on falling into the creek, did well, you? Certainly, certainly. When I climbed out of the water a moment later, both of my pockets were full of fish. Oh, oh yes, they were. That's the gold turned this bunch of... Hey, Marmaduke. Yes, yes. I suppose all of those Scotch friends of yours got together and put up a monument right on the spot. Yeah, like the monument in Siberia, where you found the platinum mine. Or like the big one they built for you in India. What'd you say the name of that one was? The Taj Mahal. Go on, is there another monument in Scotland? Well, now that you've mentioned it, I believe my Scottish friends did erect a modest shaft of marble or granite to commemorate the event. Yes, yes. This is too much for me. I can't stand it more. Zeke! Oh, Zeke! Hey, yeah, Frank. This is your place. How much longer are you going to let that old windbag Marmaduke Gillingwater fill it full of hot air? Zeke, we got to do something. Yep, you're right. I'm in favor of taking the butt end of my gun and... I know, Frank, no. Yeah, we got to make it legal. Let's go see Sam Porter, the sheriff. Best thing to do is get a pot of tar and some feathers. Yeah, I agree with you. But let's see Sam first. All right, come on. <laughs> see you young folks heading for a moonlight buggy ride kind of makes me jealous. Oh, why, Dad, I didn't know you were so romantic. <laughs> You should have seen me about 25 years ago when I was courting you Ma. <laughs> <laughs> we won't be late, Mr. Porter. I've got to get back to the post office and sort the midnight mail. Oh, shucks. I ain't worrying about that. Who in thunder racing can... Come in! Hey, evening, Sam. Evening, folks. Well, hi, Hi, Frank. Well, Zeke Matthews and Frank Beals. What do you gents want at this time of night? Plenty. Sam, this town's got a serious problem. And we think you ought to handle it. A problem? One ornery, no good deadbeat who's run up bills all over town and ain't got a dime to pay him. That's right. He owes me money for room and board, owes Frank, owes Chet Burke, Shad Collins. I'm in favor of a little necktie party. Why should we all be cheated by a slick-talking... Now, now, wait a minute. Simmer down, Frank. How do you know this fella ain't gonna pay his debts? Because he ain't got a cent, Sam. I'm sure of that. Well, no good will come flying off the handle. There's no need to... If we're not gonna get our money, let's get some satisfaction. Run the coyote out of town on a rail. Oh, no, that's no way. Say, what's this gent's name? Marmaduke Gillingwater. What? Yeah, he's been in town over a month now, and he ain't... Cynthia, give him my hat. Well, Dad, what in the world's wrong? Marmaduke Gillingwater. That's a critter who borrowed ten bucks from me not over an hour ago. Come on, boys, I'm going with you. Zeke, you rustle a bucket of whitewash. Naturally, the Australians wanted to thank me, so they commissioned an artist to create a life-sized statue in bronze. It, uh, it now stands in one of the public squares in Melbourne. Oh, right on the... All right, Marmaduke, you played out your string. The shin digs up. Sir, what's the meaning of this? It means you're sick of listening to your bunk. You owe money to everybody in town, I'll pay up. Either that or you'll be taking a bath in whitewash. You and your big lies about monuments. I'll give you a monument right over on Boo Hill. That right, boy? Now, now, gentlemen, gentlemen, I'll concede I'm justly in debt to all of you, but it's really a small matter, and I bid you be of good cheer. I shall speed a letter to my, uh, <clears throat> my bankers in St. Louis this very night. The return stage will bring more than enough cash. Return stage? Yes. It's a three weeks' trip from here to St. Louis. Well, now you tell us the truth, Gillenwater. Are you stone broke? Uh, not broke, Sheriff. Merely... Um, Without solvent funds. Well, we're I'd wasting time. Let's ride this lion coyote out of town. Are you with me, boy? Here. Oh, oh, oh. I get his hand. Somebody grab his feet. I got him, Frank. No, no, you can't do this. Oh. We're doing it. Head for the door, boys. Oh, you'll rue this action. Every last man will rue it. A pox, I say, for all of you. Somebody get a rail. Where's the whitewash? There, yeah. Come right up, Frank. We lose a hitch rail. All right, let us down there. Here, come on. Gee, Gee, There it is. All right, straddle it, you oily tongue, dead feet. Oh, oh, oh. Now, oh. ah, head for the edge of town. Come on. Come on. Oh. 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 This is as good a place as any. 
Give me the back of the whitewash, Zeke. Yeah, better use the brush. I'll use it all right. Oh! 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 There. That ought to give you an idea of what we think of dead beats. All together now, oh. throw him into the dead. You, you miserable pumpkin. Oh, 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 oh. Riding toward their trailside camp not far from Prairie Flats, the Lone Ranger and Tonto brought their horses to a sudden halt. Celebration. Ah, uh, maybe white man have big powwow, call it picnic. No, not at this time of night, Tonto. Especially this far from town. You think maybe... I, uh, I don't know. But I'm curious enough to find out. City big fella. <laughs> we'll leave the horses here, Tonto, and follow this trail on foot for a while. Ah, uh. come on. Ill luck. And this horrible preparation they call whitewash. Ah. Oh, there. Oh, oh, steady, steady. Oh. oh, hello, Pop. Happen to see what the citizens of Prairie Flats did to you. Pretty rotten deal. Simply evidence of the perfidy and ingratitude of mankind. That's oh, a shame, Pop. Town shouldn't treat a man like that. Maybe I can help you out. My name, sir, is Marmaduke Gillingwater. Uh. And I am nobody's uh, pop. Well, my mistake, just forget it. Well, I was on the edge of that crowd that brought you out here. And I gathered that you were expecting some money from the East and it failed to arrive. Oh, stranger, you are a man of rare perception. Under the circumstances, I thought you might be interested in a little business proposition. Uh, you mean work? No, no, I... No, no, I, no wait, I, wait, I, I'll uh, explain. No. no, no, wait. My name's Durkin, Ace Durkin. I'm the owner of a medicine show camped a few miles the other side of town. Durkin's Consolidated Museum of Wonders. Ah, an imposing title. Well, we've been playing all these western towns around here. But I like to arrive in a new town well recommended by an important citizen. You could do that for me. Oh, uh, not I. My recommendation in Prairie Flats would, uh, would hang you. Suppose the stage that arrives from St. Louis in the morning was carrying an envelope full of cash. Addressed to you. By, by the beard of Jupiter. Could you do that? Well, one of my boys could stop the stage, bribe the driver, and see that a letter like that got into the mail. And all you want me to do is recommend your show? That's all. Just give it some class. Smooth over any wrinkles that might come up while we're in Prairie Flats. There'll, uh, there'll be $500 in the envelope. Uh, Mr. Durkin, sir, I shall be happy to lend my assistance. Good. And if you stay right here where they left you, I'll lay odds that some of those yokels will be coming out to look for you the first thing in the morning. I'll return to their miserable hamlets completely vindicated. Sure, and what's more, hey, we can... Hey, get... hey, we just spotted an owl hooting an engine headed this way. An owl hoot? How do you know? Well, he's wearing a mask. I figure him and the redskin... No through over... beaten long riders going to cut in on me. You two hombres are supposed to be gunslingers. Stand back there and stop them. With lead. <laughs> Strange, Tonto. All that noise seemed to be coming from somewhere near here just a few minutes ago. Uh, now there's no definite sign of any. The rocks over there. Stay behind them, Tonto. Use your gun. Uh. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. At the first blast from the guns of Ace Durkin's men, the Lone Ranger and Tonto threw themselves behind the only shelter they could find, a few low-lying rocks. This isn't much protection, Tonto. Those men are on higher ground. Uh, Doc, make them plenty hard to see. There was no reason for them to open fire, unless we've stumbled onto a gang of outlaws. Uh, They'll be at their mercy if they climb any higher up that slope. Best thing for us to do is try... I can only wing one of them. We can make a break, get back to the horses. Ah. Then ride and outflank them. Find out what this is all about. Only trouble is I'm not having much luck in... Oh, my arm! The luck got me right in the arm. That did it. Come on, Toto. Keep low and run for it. Ah. About the place those men were when they opened fire, Tonto. Ah. Not a sign of them now, even though one may be wounded. They probably had horses and got away on one of these side trails. Ah. And rise, then try to follow their trail. Just after sunrise the following morning when Marmaduke Gillingwater was aroused from peaceful slumber. Oh, uh, an unholy hour to be awakened in the haystack. Uh, Horsemen coming from Prairie Flats. Maybe last night wasn't a dream after all. Oh, boy. Oh, 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 here he is, Dad. Oh, I'm so glad. Yep, mighty lucky we found you. Ain't that right, Frank? It sure is. And what ridiculous accusations have you come to hurl at me now? Why, nothing like that, Mr. Gillingwater. Uh, we all made a mistake last night. Frank and me was appointed to find you and apologize. Very well, I accept your apology. Good day, sir. Oh, what Dad is trying to say is that Mel Rand, he worked at the post office, found a letter for you in this morning's mail. It's from Wells Fargo, the bankers in St. Louis. Ah, uh, yes. You see, this letter proves to Prairie Flats that you're not a faker at all. Oh, here, take it. And welcome back to a town that loves you. If you can forgive us. <laughs> My good friends, it is indeed heartwarming to be back among you. Yes, yes, it is. Well, you know, Marmaduke, he came back just in time to see the beginning of the greatest civic improvement in the history of Prairie Flats. Is that so, Sheriff? Well, what is it? We're going to build the finest string of loading corrals for horses that the West has ever seen. Loading corral? Yeah, 65 of them. Yeah. Run about half a mile on both sides of the railroad track. Well, I congratulate you and your fellow citizen, Sheriff. But such a large venture must entail quite a sum of money. Oh, we've got that part all figured out. Building the corrals out of first-grade rails like you... Uh, don't explain uh, that. I understand. Yes, it will cost exactly $42,000. Everybody in town has pitched in his share. We've got the cash all together over in the bank. Splendid, splendid. Such a display of civic pride... Mu- uh, why, what in the world is that? No, what in the name can that be? Is a circus, folks, or something like that? Medicine show. I never saw one. Durkin. Well, I do believe it's Ace Durkin. Mr. Gillingwater. Do you know him, Marmaduke? Durkin, is there any place under the sun where good friends do not meet? I'm delighted to see you, old fellow. I never dreamed you were west out here, Mr. Gillingwater. My troop and I are just going through. You must stay here a few days, by all means. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce my good friend, Dr. Durkin. I can assure you that his entertainment is the finest in the land. And his elixir... A boon to suffering mankind. I can't recommend Dr. Durkin too highly. Well, thank you, Mr. Gillingwater. Maybe my company will stay here in Prairie Flats for a few days. Please, I... please. Hey, I've been robbed. Dad, Where's it? Dad, somebody stole Mel's wallet right out of his pocket. Cynthia and I were just standing in the crowd, Sheriff. Somebody bumped against me. That's away with crowds. Another reason why I don't like medicine shows. Well, I'll keep my eyes peeled, son. And you keep the rest of your money at home. Sure. 
Come on, sir. Yes, I'm beginning to suspect your cannery upon the part of your henchman, Durkin. I didn't bargain for this kind of thing. Shut up. You made a deal and you'll keep it. I, uh, uh, very well, Dr. Durkin. I'll see you at your showgrounds later in the evening. <laughs> I'll be looking for you, Gillingwater. <laughs> Durkin, the people in this town are friends of mine. They trust me. You tricked me into unwittingly becoming a part of your nefarious scheme. Save them big words for the yokels. Me and my boys are going to work this burg and work it any way we want to. And you'll cover up for us. If you don't, I'll tell your, uh, your friends where that $500 came from. You scoundrel. You unmitigated scoundrel. You drew cards, Gillingwater, and you're going to play them. Because I'm backing up my deal with this. A, a gun... Lift up that tent flap and keep watching. Oh, why was I ever so foolish as to... Good evening, Mr. Gillingwater. <laughs> Sounds. An outlaw. A, a masked outlaw. And an Indian. Uh, don't, don't shoot her. I'll gladly forfeit my purse if you... I'm just... not an outlaw. But I've been following your trail ever since last night. Let's uh, walk over beyond those trees. Come on, Toto. Ah. Well, <clears throat> well, what do you want? I've heard about you for several years, Marmaduke. This is the first time we've ever met. If it isn't my money you're after, what do you want? I'd like to check on a few suspicions I have. I, uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, this medicine show. It really isn't any show at all. Just a cover-up for a gang of pickpockets and robbers. Why, yes, that's true. But I didn't know it until just now. I, I mean, this afternoon. Gangs of this kind generally have something in mind besides picking pockets when they stop in a town this size. You uh, know what it is? No, no, I... Truly, I, I don't. Do you know whether the bank here in Prairie Flats carries much money on deposit? Oh, I'm just visiting here. I, I'm a stranger. Nothing except those new horse corrals they're going to build. Well, what's that? Something Sheriff Porter was telling me. They intend to build numerous horse-loading corrals at a cost of $42,000. Each citizen has subscribed money. Mm. That might be it. Did you mention this to your friend, Mr. Durkin? No, that rascal is no friend of mine. Did you mention it? I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't. Perhaps I may. We can't afford to overlook that chance. Come on, Marmaduke. You and Tonto and I are going to keep a close watch on that bank. <laughs> midnight, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Marmaduke Gillingwater were crouched in the tall grass which covered a vacant lot next to the Prairie Flats Bank. Oh, this is the most excruciatingly uncomfortable three hours I've ever spent. May not mean a thing, but at least we've got... Tonto. Uh, three men coming around from the back. They're going to pry open that side window. This is an extremely dangerous venture. I don't quiet, think I... Quiet, quiet. I'm in bank window, Kimasabi. Yes, I see. Keep your gun handy, Tonto. Uh -huh. Oh, please, sir, whoever you are, I'm deathly afraid of gunfire. Don't worry. I'll tell you what to do. They've blown the safe, Tonto. Uh -huh. Now, Mama Duke, listen and do exactly as I tell you. Go to that window over there. It's wide open. Take a stone and throw it through the bank. Hit the front window from the inside. Understand? Uh, I, it, do I have to do it? There'll probably be serious consequences if you don't. Hurry up. Here, here's a stone. I... Uh, Yes, sir. Why doesn't he hurry? If we don't dry them out of there soon, we'll... There it is. Watch the window. Here they come. Hey, somebody coming in the front. Up this way. Come on. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, oh my leg. Oh. Me get another fella. Good. I'll stop these two. <coughs> and this. Oh, no. Oh, no. The whole town will be here in a minute. Marmaduke. Been hiding Here, the these bags are probably packed with every cent that was in the bank. Turn them over to the sheriff. All right, adios. Come on, Tonto. Uh, uh, now, wait. You can't leave me here like this. What will I say? Ah, uh, the sheriff here has gone for a 
Well, something. Quiet, folks. Quiet down now. Sheriff Porter's got something important to say. I'm uh, sure all of you know why I've asked every citizen of Prairie Flats to attend this meeting. Last night, our town came mighty near being robbed of all the money we have. The fact that the robbery failed and the men who tried it are now in jail is due largely to a gent we formerly misjudged. He's standing right here beside me. I mean a man we're proud to call our friend, Marmaduke Gillingwater. Ah, oh, my, my friends, your heartfelt ovation inspires uh, go on, me. Sam, go on, tell him what we're going to do. Marmaduke, the citizens of Prairie Flats figure the least they can do is as much as all the other towns where you've been. They've erected monuments in your honor. So we're going to give you a monument, too. Oh, now, really, such an expression of your gratitude isn't necessary. Of course, if you insist, why, uh, I... Cynthia, you tell him. Well, what Dad means, Mr. Gillingwater, is this. The other towns have given you monuments of stone or marble or bronze. Now, Prairie Flats is going to give you something better than that. Something really worthy of your ability and talent. Oh, you, you overwhelm me. Prairie Flats is going to give you a job. Uh, job? You mean... Work! And Work. because we want you to make your home here, to be with us always, we've taken the suggestion of a friend. Our monument to you, Marmaduke Gillingwater, is a permanent lifetime job whitewashing the new horse corral. Whitewash? Oh! Well, uh, oh. ain't you gonna say something, Mr. Gillingwater? Uh, I'm speechless. Sure, sure, I know how uh, you think. Sheriff, could I ask one question? Oh, sure. Your daughter said that a friend suggested this uh, monument in my honor. Do you mind telling me who that friend is? Why, of course not. He's a gent we all know, called the Lone Ranger. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated.